Hello, and welcome back to Empowered the Podcast. I'm your host, Linda Brand, and I'm super excited, especially excited for today's guest, Rachel Medors. Rachel has written a very powerful, amazing little book called How to Love Yourself in Less Than a Week and Also for the Rest of Your Life. Rachel is a best-selling author, speaker, psychotherapist, and founder of Love Your Life LLC, a holistic executive coaching and professional development company where she helps women entrepreneurs, visionaries, and CEOs experience more love, peace, and wealth in all of its forms. Her insights and teachings have been featured on Forbes, Psychology Today, CBS News, Ellen DeGeneres, The Learning Channel, and South by Southwest Interactive. Her mission is to uplift and inspire the world by teaching people how to love themselves and help everyone, especially women, give themselves everything they ever wanted in life now. Oh my goodness, I love this. Hello, Rachel. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy to be with you. I can't even tell you. Oh my gosh, Linda, <laughs> thank you. I was, I'm so happy to be here with you too. Thank you. Yes, we met in Florida back at Kathy Heller's retreat. Do you remember? Yes. <laughs> okay. And I had to have your book. I knew as soon as you told me the name of the book, I was like, that's my book because I am like, people call me the self-care queen. I've been on the journey, Rachel, for a very long time on how to love myself. It has been a long, long journey. So tell us a little bit about the beginning and what got you into this work that you're doing and what inspired you to write this fabulous little book. First of all, thank you so much for all your kind and just all your kind words about the book. It means so much to me that it's made a difference for you and that it like actually makes a difference for people because otherwise why do what we do, you know? So it's yeah. it means a lot. Okay. Well, the beginning, I mean, I don't know how far back in the beginning when we want to go, the short version of the beginning is like a lot of people, I did not have an easy beginning. And by the time I was 20, 21, I was really suffering. I, I didn't necessarily want to live anymore. I just like so much pain, even though I had tried to do work on myself, there just was a lot of leftover pain from a crazy childhood. And I was in the middle of a personal growth course, like really trying, really to try and hard to work on things. And this beautiful woman leaned down to me and she whispered in my ear she said something like you know this would all get better if you would love yourself and in that moment I felt two things at the same time one is I felt like someone just gave me the keys to the castle like here's the cure mm -hmm. and at the same time I wanted to roll my eyes because I had no idea what that meant like great but how right and you know, for years and years, I did all sorts of work and I was helping people. And of course, life kept getting better and better because I kept working on myself more and more. And, you know, thank God for all the tools that are out there. Yeah. But finally, what I realized later on, you know, I was working with couples and I just started to really see that really the core of everything, one could say, does come down to, can we love ourselves? Yeah. How do we do that for real? And so the idea for the book came, I was taking a walk one day and I, I knew I wanted to give something to the world in the form of a book. And the whole idea came all at once that I wanted it to be short. I wanted it to oh. be really down to earth. Okay. So you knew you wanted to give a gift to the world. You were walking and it came to you to write this powerful, small, beautiful book to serve like the planet, basically. Yes, I because I had finally realized, oh, there is a how-to. There is a way to learn how to love ourselves that no one is really teaching. Yeah. And it actually isn't that complicated. And I wanted to make it so tangible, so easy yeah. and filled with permission so that women know, hey, this is something you can start doing right now. You're allowed to have a better life immediately. Yeah, I think that so many people don't realize how we don't love ourselves. I feel like, you know, um, I can bring up the word narcissist because people, the old thinking around a narcissist is that they love themselves, but they really hate themselves. And you're the psychotherapist, you know, right? Am I right? Yes, you're yeah. right. Yeah. 
And so anyway, I just feel like there's a lot of people walking around miserable and they don't love themselves and they don't even like themselves. And like I said, I've been on the journey for a very long time and I love your book because it does give these powerful things. And one of the huge things that I took away from your book is, is the gentleness, the gentleness that is in this book. And it's like, I literally think about your book and what is the most loving next thing I can do right now, you know, for myself. And it just, it's so powerful. So tell us, let's see. So you also have a quote that you said that it's loving yourself is the most productive thing you can do. Speak on that a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think, first of all, you just touched on it. And so here, here are the two pieces that I think making that statement really address. One is the worry the worry that if we love ourselves, we will become selfish in some way or overly focused on ourselves. And that is so not true. In fact, it, the opposite is true because when we're filled with love, all we want to do is share it with others. The second part, and I think you and I relate to this and a lot of the women we serve relate to this, is the idea of being a high achieving woman or a leader. And we love productivity, most of us. I mean, you know, have a to-do list and cross something off and it's a win right there. Yeah. And I think we get afraid. There's some myth that if we slow down to really care and address and tend to what is right here in our heart that we're craving, that everything will fall by the wayside and we won't get anything done or we'll slow down or wh whatever that worry is. And again, even though it sounds, how can it possibly be true? I find that it's actually true because there's this great paradigm, which is slow down to speed up. And what it's saying is when we actually slow down to just handle one thing at a time or to take an extra 15 minutes to walk outside or rest, not only is everything that we do afterwards done better, but who we're being is so much more powerful and available and effective. That's yeah, that's the best way I could describe it in the moment. And why, why do you believe that? Like, why, what do you think the reason is? I think it's because it's kind of like, you know, how, when you're in a really good mood, just everything is better. Yeah. The partner looks cuter. The bank account looks okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it's, it's similar with self-love in that the person that we're being when we feel loved, yeah, you can call it a vibration. You can call it an energy. Yeah. You can call, you know, our attention is all yeah. much more shiny and available when it feels good over here. Yeah. It's incredible. Okay. So tell us about something that we can do today to love ourselves more. Okay. Like what's one or two things that we can do to people well, first who haven't of all, read your book? Your amazing book. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, you mentioned this, and I think this is a really powerful thing to try. One of the things I like about the book is there's a whole chapter devoted to things you can do to love yourself that take less than three minutes, three minutes or less. I mean, that's the thing. It, it doesn't have to take a long time. So one of the things is to slow down and ask ourselves, what is the most loving thing I can do for myself right now? And really ask the question and just trust whatever floats up. And for a long time, when I started asking this question, the thing that floated up for me was simply like rest, yeah. relax. Stop the doing and the chasing and the hustle. And we're always like having to earn our worth. And there's just this huge self-worth thing that I think women have, I, I myself, and it's like, we're always like the doing is the productive, like we talked about and doing less is actually like you're saying, going for the walk for 15 minutes, taking a break. It's just like a spirit. It's almost a spiritual, it's spiritual. Are you spiritual? I assume. You Absolutely. Are. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, we're all connected and, and for someone who doesn't consider them spiritual, that's okay too. And for right. someone who's like, oh, I'm so spiritual. That's great too. It, it, it doesn't matter really yeah. like what the identity is, yeah. but what matters is what you're saying. It's 
who we are being yeah is the is how things get done and how we feel good but so to ask yourself the question and be willing to listen to the answer and do the thing Mm -hmm. um there's something else you said that was so yummy in a flu that made me oh yeah it's something like this idea I, i love helping women make money i want women to be wealthy And I really want to break down all the myths that it's like not okay to want money. In fact, women have that so much more than men. You think men are walking around saying it's not okay for me to make a lot of money. (laughs) Like that's not happening, right? right? right. And imagine what the world would look like if it were filled with women who love themselves and were making a lot of money. Exactly. And the reason why I say that, this is what it was. You said something that reminded me, I have this mantra And I mean, I have many things I say to myself and beliefs that I practice believing. And one of them is the less I work, the more money I make. Mm, I love it. And I've watched it be true. Yeah. It happened to me. It happened to me the one day that I like literally stopped everything. I literally sold two things that day. I've seen the evidence. It's a hundred percent accurate. It's so true. That's huge. Yeah. Let's let's look at it together for a minute. So yeah. on that particular day, you did less, you made more. Yeah. If, if if you were gonna like just even say it messy with no pressure at all and just look at how do you think that happened? I mean, how genuinely why do you think that happened? Or how do I you feel think that, that it's an energy thing? I think it's about surrender. I think it's about um allowing myself the rest, like you say, Rachel, and just you know, making that decision that, you know what, no, I'm done for the day. And then, you know, I knew, I knew it was going to bring something. I I just knew it's, it's, we are so powerful. Our intuitions are so huge. My intuition is incredible, but I love one thing you said about the woman who said that in your ear about loving yourself because your inner self, your inner guy, I feel like I just got the keys to the castle. You knew that was it. Like she said that and you're like, whoa. And it literally, it is the keys to the castle, I think is Mm -hmm. what this whole conversation is about and your book is about. And that's what I want to share with the world and the audience too. Like I want people to realize it's not selfish because that's a program. And, you know, that's kind of, started in the church, I think too, a lot of it, the program of serving and giving and, you know, not putting yourself first. It's, you know, especially women with the kids and all the things, right. Everybody's fed first and you're, you know, I watched my mother do it, you know, and, you know, there was one piece of pizza left and she maybe only had one and I wanted it or someone wanted it. And she was like, Oh, have it. it it's almost like, that, you know, the constant sacrificing, you know? Yes. It's, it's heartbreaking. And I think part of, I think what we're doing is helping people recognize the possibility of new beliefs. Yes. I mean, I would never say like being of service is bad. I, I want to serve the world, you know? Right. But I think there's been so much culturalization, if that's yeah. the right word, indoctrination about that it's yeah. better to give than receive. You should always be giving. And it does, it leaves a person de- depleted in a state of sacrifice or martyrna- martyrdom. And, and those things don't create pleasure, wealth, joy, no. excess, abundance. Like, no, that's not the energy of that. Right. Um, and I love something else you mentioned about self-worth. So this is an idea I think we can all play with, which is if we asked ourselves, okay, if my self-worth was like through the roof, what are some of the things that I would be doing and not doing? And Mm. what's cool about that is we can start doing those things and stop doing those other things now. Doing so will increase our self-worth kind of like the prize for taking the action. A hundred percent. I've also witness that there is a distinction though with like spending money for example because you could like okay the person that I'm choosing to be right now has all of these things or you know gets massages and Botox or whatever it is that makes you feel good and then perhaps financially it doesn't make sense or logically 
to put that on the card because you're not making the money or something like that. So speak on that distinction. If I had this self-worth up here, can you do that, please? Yes, I love that. I love that. So, um, okay. So first I want to share a piece of advice my mother gave me that I love and I still use. And one day she, she said to me once, if it's $5 or less, just buy it. And I know that might sound small or silly, but so often we're standing there, whether it's at the grocery store over the fancy blueberries or the cheap blueberry, you know, whatever it is, or the drugstore, and we slow down about buying things that really don't affect our bank account. And, and so I want to speak to the things that are small like that, that we don't give ourselves. So whether it's having a like a small set point, like $5 or $20 that you just say to yourself, for the rest of my life, it's something small like that. I don't need to waver about what to do. I'm just going to give it to myself because I love myself. I don't need any other reason. I love that. And then, thank you. And then the bigger things, like there was a time for me, I remember thinking, okay, when I'm, when I'm rich, like if I ever get rich and I'm really successful, I'm going to get a massage like twice a month. And the time finally came where I could do that. Now I have, now I get a 90 massage every week, period. I don't work on Fridays. I get a yeah, massage. This awesome. is like a dream come true for me. Right. Um, but years ago, before that happened, I was $80,000 in debt. And so what I want to say about that is if you are someone who has debt, the thing that turned that around for me, the very first step that changed it all was actually something that happened in my mind. And I'm going to share it with you now. And it was recognizing that I felt shame, some kind of shame, some kind of judgment about having that debt. And then switching that to actually being grateful and appreciative. And so if you're in debt, what I want to say to you is take a moment and think about all the things that money gave you. Even if it was purses, who cares what it was, <laughs> whether yeah. it was trips or medical care or whatever, it doesn't matter. It all gave you something you wanted. And isn't that great? Yeah. And it, as soon as I shifted to appreciation within a year, I was on a whole new plan and, and I, now I have zero debt and money in the bank, but right. I say that because so much, everything is like an inner game and an outer game, mm -hmm. anything you can do, anything you can tell yourself that makes it softer and gentler and sweeter and kinder in there will make a difference in the actions you take. Absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, that's why we, you know, I always say this, you don't brush your teeth once and you're good for a week. You don't work out once <laughs> and you're fit. You have to keep doing the work and it is work. And I like today I was high vibration. Like this morning, I just, I was, you know, I have a lot of books and stuff spiritual leaders that I follow. And I was doing the things I had my morning practice and I want to hear about yours because I heard yours on another show and I love it because it's very aligned with mine. And I went to boxing and it's really funny because there's a guy that I dated for a minute and we're friends and it's a story why. And um, he was there for the first time in months. I haven't seen him at boxing. And I have gray going on here. I have the Botox is worn off. I probably gained weight. And he's like, how much weight have you lost? I'm like, what? I was thinking in my mind, lost. And so it's just funny. And I'm very authentic and I don't care. He could be listening. I don't care. The point is, <laughs> I was so high vibe. My vibration, it's energy is this stuff we talk about. It's so real. And we were messaging a tiny bit after, and he said, like, you look beautiful. You do look like you. I was like, okay, this vibration thing is real. Because like I said, and he's so observant. He'll be like, what'd you do to your lips? Did you get your lips? Done? Oh, what'd you, did you get some boat? I'm like, what? What guy notices this stuff? And then here today, it's just hilarious. Anyway. But so you spoke, I love what you said about looking at things differently because, you know, debt isn't the worst thing in the world. And especially, you know, when you're growing a business, like, you know, there's just so much. So we were talking about self-worth and you were saying that if you had like your self-worth was 
to the sky, what would you do? What would your next thing do? I love that for anyone who's struggling in perhaps, you know, a terrible relationship and they're not being treated well, or they're tolerating something. Right. And I love that. So um, that's just huge. And by the way, I bought flowers today and I've been buying flowers because I definitely feel expansive and abundant when I have them. But because of you and our interview and your book, I bought, we'll share what you said in the book about the flowers, how you would buy yourself flowers from the grocery store and put one flower next to the bed. And it was a reminder every day that you love yourself. I love that. That's so cute. It's so special. So tell us about your personal, if you don't mind, your personal like story. Did you like what transpired in your life after you learned to love yourself? Like you fully love and accept yourself a hundred percent and tell us what's changed in your life. Okay. Well, first I, I feel like I need to backtrack for one second. <laughs> yeah, so, of course. You know, I know I jump bring, around. No, I love it. I love it. Bring me back to here if I forget. But I wanted to say about whether it's like spending a lot of money now and feeling like maybe now isn't the moment or the flowers, the question I would ask is what piece of that can you do now? So for me, when I finally decided I was going to love myself, even if I didn't know how yet, I was going to figure it out. That's something I could do. I could afford to buy and flowers at the grocery store that it was five bucks at the time, you know? And so if you're, if there's something really big you want, or if maybe you want massages every week, whatever the dream is, what piece of it can you start giving yourself now? There's always some piece we can start with now and that's how we grow it. So that's, I wanted to I say that, that about that. That's good. Yeah. Something small or yeah. Um, okay. And then Did you, oh, what, so what's happened since? Yes. What has happened in your life? since I know that you have an amazing business and you're making all this, you know, you're doing amazing. You're making all this money. You work very little and you manifested that, or you created all that. And I love it. And that's my dream. That's my dream. And I visualize it, you know, good. And like, no, and so that's your dream. And so to me, I want to say to you that it's yours, then it's yours. Thank you. Okay. So just to be clear, Self-love is a practice. I am not walking around on waters and clouds all day. <laughs> I practice, you know, um, some days are like a dream. Like I was just last night, my husband and I, we went out to dinner. We, we have a birthday a day apart from each other. And we were traveling during our birthday. So we finally, we have January birthday. So we finally, and we, and I was, it was just, really holding like how lucky I am, how grateful I am, how much I love my life, how scary it can be sometimes when life starts feeling so good. Like, can it keep being this good? Is the, is like, is the shoe going to drop? There's, it's a lot of right. practicing our ability to have it be this good and have that be normal. Right. And so, so I'm happy to, sh I want to share like some of the great things that have happened since, and yeah. it's a daily practice. You yes. know, there are like the last time I was at a photo shoot, I mean, I had a self-judgment attack, like nobody's business. Like, you know, it, it, it still flows, you know what I mean? I still yeah. have my moments, but what I love now is that there's always something we can do. We can always slow down. We can always ask what's the most loving thing I can do now. So what's happened since then is this book, which is a dream come true. I wrote and illustrated it. Um, I wanted to ask you that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you, you did do the artwork in there? I did do the oh. artwork. Yeah. I oh, should have put cute. that on the book somewhere, but That's yeah, cute. I loved yeah. doing the artwork. To ask. It's so cute. Yeah. And yes, I did see Ellen. Go ahead. Tell us what. Yeah. Ellen DeGeneres chose my book for her 12 days of holiday giveaways and her be kind box, which was another dream come true because I love her and I love I the like idea it. of the book going out through her. Um, yeah, I have a business that I love. I have a seven figure coaching and speaking business. I help women really design the life of their dreams and one step at a time, make it real. And what I love about that and the work that we both do that, that many of us do is the more we realize that the life that we're living, like how good we can live our own lives is, lives is actually the integrity. It's the fuel 
behind the business. Oh yeah. My, my behind the scenes looks exactly the same as the front of the scenes. The front of the scenes is I'm wearing this shirt and this mm-hmm. lipstick and on the bottom, I'm wearing my pajamas and my fuzzy <laughs> socks. And like, this is my life. And I love yeah, it. That's a great um, life. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. I guess I was like wondering, like, were you divorced or were you like single? And then like, oh. you looked up and then you attracted your husband and you're, you know, like, I was curious about that just because, I mean, I had my struggles and I have a whole story and I'm actually writing a book and it's my life story. It's an empowered you know, an inspirational true story. And I came up with the title today. Do you want to share? Sure. It's going to be Abandoned to Empowered. So, and it came to me today, like that's the perfect name of my book because the book was going to be something around empowered, but Abandoned to Empowered makes perfect sense. I won't get amazing. All the Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And so did you self-publish the book? I'm just curious. No, actually, I um, the very first publisher I reached out to said, yes, oh my gosh, I love you. I love the book. I love the idea. Yeah. But the truth is we we started working together and the book came out and none of it was going the way I really wanted it to. And like many of us who do personal growth work, I kept asking myself, what am I doing? What am I putting out? And I want to say that, especially, you know, for anyone who's listening that does do a lot of personal growth work is sometimes we can, you know, over self-reflect and make something about us that actually has nothing to do with us at all. And once I had that realization and I really asked myself, okay, what's the most loving thing I could do for myself in this situation? And it was to get the heck out of it. So I reached out to a dear friend of mine who had just fully launched a a new publishing company and they loved the book and they took over and it's been a dream ever since. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. You honored yourself. Like that's so huge. So you were kind of questioning what is this? And then you followed, no, I want to do what feels better for me. I think that's a gigantic thing to share too. And that's, you know, I am practicing that a lot, just paying attention to your your inner guide, your higher self, all of that. Oh, tell us about your background. Cause are you Jewish? I mean, I think you are. Right? Yeah. We're both uh-huh. Jewish. Yeah. I'm Jewish too. I grew up with like zero religion and that's a whole story, but tell us about your faith a little bit. Cause it sounds like it's, <laughs> did that have something a lot to do with a lot of things in your, you are making me laugh. Hold on one oh, second. <laughs> oh yeah. And I also want to hear before we wrap this up about your improv, your funny stuff. Cause that is so fascinating and cute. Okay. Oh my God. Linda, I love you. Okay. First of all, (laughs) I'm going to back up and answer a question you asked earlier. Okay. But also I'm so excited that you're Jewish. I didn't know you were Jewish. It's so fun to find other Jews. (laughs) We love you. Even if you're not Jewish, we love you, whatever you are, but if you are Jewish, it feels extra exciting when you are Jewish. Okay. Um, you had asked me about if I had been divorced or single or any of that stuff. And I wanted to respond to that by saying I was, I am a late bloomer. And I met my husband when I was in my thirties and we were engaged for like five years, I think, before we got married, we've been together 20 years. So to answer that question, I've never been divorced because I waited forever to get married. Um, and we don't have kids. We have two cats and a dog. Um, but what I will say is that when I turned whatever corner it was, like really started saying yes to myself and like really being able to have love here, that relationship changed dramatically. For the and better, so right? For the better. The way, the way we love each other now, and it's always been good. I mean, I've been the one that's had the issues, <laughs> but um, yeah, but the way it is now is like a dream. And I, I think that's the important thing that I want to say to any of us is I promise as much as I can promise anything that giving yourself the love that you deserve in whatever action that looks like improves everything. It 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 changes the trajectory of your life. And that's what I wanted with this book. I wanted to write a book that was light and sweet, but also could change the trajectory of your life. Yeah. It's so powerful. Just knowing that 
working on loving yourself makes such a gigantic difference. And some people grew up in a house where they were taught to love themselves and that their parents loved them unconditionally and taught them to love themselves. And if that was the case, then amazing. But I didn't grow up in that house, you know, and I had a lot of self-worth issues and I've done a lot of healing, especially when I sold my home and relocated across the country to Florida and just the growth has been like, I've changed since I met you and I've changed since two weeks ago. I'm, I'm a different person. It's like, it's amazing. I love it. Actually. I love the, the personal growth and, but yeah, your, your book is just extremely important and powerful and needed. Tell us about, I love this idea that you and your husband have some kind of comedy thing. It is so cute <laughs> and funny. And I love comedy. I want, yeah. Tell me. I will. Well, finish that sentence. You want what? Oh, I want to know I what want, you want. <laughs> I want my husband, like the, the man that comes into my life, my partner to make me laugh because my friend back in Michigan, her husband, they've been together a very long time and he makes her laugh. And I'm like, I want that. I want to laugh every single day of my life. Like that would be a dream. Yes, that's yours. That is totally there for you. We laugh <laughs> every day. You can laugh every day. It's oh, it makes life so much more sweet. Yeah. We co-own with a dear friend of ours, Tari Laws Phillips, and our, our silent friend partner, Justin York, and my husband, Dave, and I all co-own together an improv comedy theater and conservatory here in Austin. And it's called Cold Town Theater. And it is so much fun. And we, we teach improv classes to every age and sketch comedy. And then my husband and I perform in an improv group wow. every Thursday night together. That's hilarious. That's and so it's, fun. It's a lot of fun. It's so important to have yeah. a place in our life where we can let go and laugh and really not yeah. give a shit. Yeah. It really helps. Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. So true. I just think we're, we're just all, um, a lot of fear is running a lot of people's everything. And one thing I told myself for 2024 is like, I don't want to make decisions out of fear. That's like a decision. I, I don't want to make any decisions out of fear because, you know, if you're a faithful person, like which I work on the spiritual stuff, we don't have to be afraid. There's not, there's never a reason to be afraid. You follow like Course in Miracles. A hundred percent. Yeah, of course. Yes. That was probably the, the first, the first personal growth spiritual thing I did in the millions of years ago. Um, yeah. I love what you're saying, Lyndon. And I would offer too, like, you don't want to make decisions out of fear. You want to make decisions out of love. From yes. love. From love. Yes. I love that. And we'll ask you just now that I brought up the Course in Miracles, who some of your inspirational teachers and books and different mentors if you would mm. share with everybody because Gabby Bernstein's one of my gigantic favorites I have all of her books I have all of her cards you know <laughs> and I have her app and I just I love her authenticity and all of the things that she shares because she gives you permission that everything's okay you know everything's okay yes. like so you had this trauma that you're shameful around. It's okay. You know, all of it. Yes. And that's what I love also and had to learn because I, I'm a recovering people pleaser and codependent and all the things. So, you know, because when you grew up with this self-worth stuff, you're always wanting everybody's approval and everyone should like you. And that's exhausting. It's so freaking exhausting. But see, now I'm like, I mean, I have... A new client who just told me that when she thinks of confidence, she thinks of me. Mm. And it's like, that is, that is so gigantic. I can't even tell you. Yeah. So I've come a long, long, long way. You're amazing. You are so amazing. And you, <laughs> you do, you feel totally different to me than when we first met and it's gorgeous. Thank you were gorgeous thank then. Thank I can just you. feel your more glowy now. Thank you. Yeah. You are, you're gorgeous too. I know I was intimidated. I was, you told me that you wrote a book and you were a seven figure earner. Somehow I learned that you were a seven figure earner. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. But yeah, that's incredible. Some of the people, I'll just share like some of the people that come to mind. My, like my, I would say my first spiritual 
person that I followed was Marianne Williamson with A Course in Miracles and A Return to Love was such a life-changing book for me. Yeah. But some of the others that come to mind, I love the book of The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. I think that's like mandatory reading for a happy life. Oh, good. Um, and I love Rachel Rogers. She wrote a book called We Should All Be Millionaires. Ooh, and I never heard of that one. I that's love that. really good. And it's also great to listen to the audio book because it's her. And then some of my personal mentors and coach- coaches, I've worked with Jesse Johnson and John Patrick Morgan and Steve Hardison. They're all wonderful, powerful stands in the world for our success. Um, Jen Cicero, Cicero's book. Oh, Jen I love. Cicero. Yeah, I have all of her Cicero. books. Cicero, yeah. Yeah, she's amazing. So and, good. She covers yeah. everything. She's got it all in there, you know? She's got yes. everything. Spiritual and yeah, it all takes courage, everything. And I noticed for myself, I am still doing this work that like, I'm like, when is this gonna, when is, you know, cause I'm looking back to two years ago and I'm not, I'm not criticizing myself. I'm very careful about that because I knew I, I learned that when we want to be critical with ourselves is when we need to be most compassionate with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yes. Agree? Yeah. A hundred percent. We, you know, yes, even anything that we can just say the words, it's okay to, you know, it's okay. It's okay that I did that. It's okay that I'm human. It's okay that I make mistakes. It's okay when I have doubts. It's all okay. Yeah. And we all have the inner critic going and we can notice it and we can send it love and it literally disappears. <laughs> That's the best thing I can tell you. I had it happen and it hasn't happened in quite a while, but one day it was so loud and so mean. And I, I just sent it love and it, it literally was gone in like seconds. That's how it works. Yeah. That's how it works. This has been such an amazing conversation. I'm sure I have a million more questions, but I'm just in awe talking to you. I'm so happy to talk to you. Is there anything else you want to share about this beautiful, powerful little book or anything you want to share with the audience or any other? I'm just really, I loved talking to you, Linda. I love being here with you. I love our conversation. I, I just encourage people to get the book for themselves and then get one for your friend, get it for you and then get it for your best friend. Yeah. It's so needed and worth it. And so good. So good. Well, thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure getting to know you a little bit and I will definitely put all your links in the show notes and the link to the book and we will stay connected for sure. Definitely. Thanks so much, Linda.